Hello everybody and welcome to Spindle TV. I'm popping in a little bit early because I want to say hi to people and say hi, see how y'all are doing and everything. Uh, Rod Wallen I see there and uh, John Thompson. John Thompson, you and um, uh, Troy were quite early, so thanks for popping in early and everything. Uh, Dave and Brooks, how are y'all doing tonight? And uh, Doug, Doug the Doll, how's things going? Thanks for popping in. Gene. Hey, Gene, what's happening? And Ronnie Probert, as always, Ronnie, good to see you. Um, good to see everybody. Thanks for popping in. I just want to say hi to everyone. Um, I've been filming some behind-the-scenes stuff. I'll be releasing a, a video announcement in the next uh, few days and everything, and I've been filming all day today, so I hope y'all are doing well. I am, uh, I'm doing well. Tired as all be it, but doing good. Now, the last couple of classes we've done uh, were modeling classes and everything. So for those that don't have the ability to create 3D models with a Vectric Aspire, you know, that are still using Desktop and Pro and everything, we're stepping it back some. We're going to talk about layout, uh, you know, ideas, and we're talking about all the different ways that we can, uh, you know, distort objects and text and, um, and try to get some creative juices flowing and everything. And it's gonna be, hopefully, uh, it'll be useful to everyone, especially the individuals that are just getting started with the Vetric software and um, are, you know, new to the process and, and, you know, the design and layout and things and stuff. So um, hopefully it'll be interesting. But um, uh, when I uh, posted last, week, last week's class, I had someone comment, uh, someone that watched the video posted a comment, and they said, uh, man, really enjoying these classes. Uh, your next class should be how to make ribbons, like ribbons and banners, you know, ribbons. <laughs> and um, uh, which was a great idea, and uh, because there's, a, there's, a, there's an art to it for sure. It's also an Aspire function and stuff, so I didn't want to do that tonight. Um, uh, but that class is, will come, be coming, uh, either next week or, or what have you. We'll, we'll, we'll make some ribbons and show you how to work with the vectors and, um, uh, work with the two rail sweep tools and things again to make some banners and all. But, uh, tonight I want to talk about, you know, uh, signs and layout and text and objects and just, uh, you know, see what we can come up with. And through the whole thing, if you have any questions about anything, be sure to throw them in the chat. Uh, I'll be happy to answer them and all. And uh, we're not, it's not going to be a very late, late or long class tonight. Um, so this is going to be a reasonable time for everybody. The last couple of classes have been <laughs> long, right? There's a lot involved. Uh, but we're going to be starting here, like really officially starting off here in about uh, three minutes. Uh, but I just want to come in and say hi to everybody and, uh, you know, stick around. Hopefully you'll get something, something out of tonight's class. All righty, all right. So um, we'll go from there. All right, so let's see here. All right, so let's see who else has popped in here. Roger, David Lowell, Kool-Aid, what's happening, bro? Uh, David uh, and Ed Newman, how you doing, guys and girls and everybody? How are y'all doing tonight? Oh, man, I've been dealing with, uh, um, I finally have a, a it's not, it's not what I wanted uh, as far as a building, a new building to put my CNC's in. Um, but I'm finally working on a, we'll call it a small shed. Uh, not small, it's me. It's bigger than my current one. My current building is 12 by 24, 12 foot by 24 foot, and it's packed with my table saw and CNC and, and uh, you know, just all my, you know, woodworking tools and stuff. But it's just uh, also over the last year it's kind of become a uh, a catch-all for 
stuff that, you know, just stuff that's in the house that, you know, that, uh, um, we're not hoarding or anything, but just collecting, <laughs> if you will, you know, from family members who have uh, passed and, uh, you know, their belonging and stuff. So I've always wanted a bigger building and um, been working towards that and stuff. And uh, so I'm moving up to an 18 by 25 building and um, it's a metal shed type building and everything. Um, and I'm doing all the work. So I just uh, uh, getting the getting prep for the concrete, and uh, I've got twelve yards of dirt coming in uh, to grade out for the slab and everything, and uh, it's just a lot of work, a lot of work, a lot of work, a lot of money, but uh, it's fun. I'm hoping, I'm hoping, I'm hoping like uh, within, uh, I don't know, month, month and a half, I'll be in the new building, fingers crossed and God willing. <laughs> it's, it's all, it's all underway. Everything's happening. The building's already, and the metal building's already bought. It's just waiting to be delivered. Uh, it's, it's in pieces, of course. I got to build it, but the parts and all are waiting to be delivered, but I don't want it delivered until uh, I get the slab and everything in. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Um, yes. Uh, yeah, Keith, 12 by 24. It, it, I mean, it's tight. Uh, um, it's it's literally, I'm talking about, I literally, I'm, I'm not a big guy. I've gotten a little bit bigger than I used to be, but I literally have to kind of suck in my gut when I'm walking around my table saw, between my table saw and where my router table is and I have a little aisle way uh, right down the middle, um, and uh, God forbid if my if I if I'm you know building a project, there's no workbench or anything in my shop. My table saw is the workbench, but it's been tight because just a lot of stuff. And then of course when you pack in things that, ouch, when you pack in things that aren't part of woodworking, when it's just like it's now it's a storage shed, <laughs> it's really like, ugh, you know, it's frustrating. But uh, so hopefully this will. Uh, I'm whining when I shouldn't be. At least I have a shed, right? At least I have a building. Um, uh, but hopefully it'll be, uh, it'll do well. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is now 716. Let's go ahead and get this ball rolling. Uh, we are on uh, channel two over here. And let me get down in the bottom uh, right corner here. Let's see, or the bottom left corner. There we go. All right. All right, all right. Good evening, Richard Brooks and Brooks Martin. Doug Fushi, hey man, how's it going? Uh, and David Pingle, how's it going? All right, now, ladies and gentlemen. All right. When it comes to layout, now many of you might be beyond this class, okay? Uh, many of you might, uh, you know, know all the tips and tricks of distorting objects and text and curving and 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 just uh, you know uh, being creative in your layout and everything uh, what I'm hoping for is that tonight um, I have something to offer to everyone that's watching uh, and everything and um, so what I want to do is kind of gauge the audience that is live with me right now uh, and everything in the chat. Um, I need a show of hands of uh, how many people uh, utilize the distort tool, uh, the distort tool in Vetric, uh, you know, to distort objects and text uh, and everything. Give me a show of hands or, you know, an I do or what have you, just so I can kind of gauge uh, what's going on there and stuff. And um, uh, the, while you're doing that, the first couple of things that I want to talk about, everybody, everybody, beginner or intermediate or advanced should know this, but um, there are two wonderful sites that will uh, help you with your creative projects. Uh, the first site is, of course, defont.com. Uh, we've all talked about defont.com in the past, in past classes, and everybody probably knows about it by for sure, but defont is a wonderful place 
uh, to find uh, a bunch of cool creative fonts for both free for both personal uh, and commercial use um, when you're searching and let me turn on my little uh, my little mouse pointer here hold on one second um, mouse highlight get that turned on wonderful uh, but with the font there's all kinds of cool categories and 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 there are so many different creative fonts now some of these fonts are for personal use and some are for commercial and personal use um, so most people, most of us are selling our signs and everything, uh, and things like that. So when we, when we choose a category, uh, and everything type in a phrase or a word or something, you know, to help you out. Like if I typed in welcome here, uh, welcome when you're, uh, in the section here on Defont, uh, go over to the more options and be sure to check off the box for 100% free. And that'll be for public domain, GPL and OFL, um, uh, licensing basically for both personal and commercial use. When you hit submit, whatever word or phrase you happen to type in, it's going to show you, uh, that word or phrase, um, in in whatever all the list of fonts and there's pages and pages of fonts that you can scroll through and uh, choose from and start to build your gallery of fonts and everything and that really will help take your science to a different level of creativity um because everybody has you know their computers uh, you know have standard sets of fonts you know that are included with the computers and everything and uh so the um being able to add or grow your font library to be really creative is is awesome and defont.com is is for me it is an absolute go-to uh, when you download for those of you that have never used defont.com uh, and everything you're going to click on download to download the file and then you're going to open that file now that file will be a zip folder that folder will be a zip folder and you're going to extract all. You're going to extract it. You're going to unzip it. And so click extract. And it'll open a brand new window with that unzipped folder. Uh, and you just want the font files. Find the font files within that folder. And you're just going to simply right click on it. And you're going to left click on install. Now I already have uh, the uh, one font installed. But we'll do it and install it again. And it'll just overwrite but uh, that's it once it's installed then you can go back to your vetric software and you can open up your text box and it will be in the list of fonts and everything for you uh when you're so that was gabrielle so if i go down to the g's uh we'll have the gabrielle font um right here right so very simple and easy to download the fonts and what's going to happen is, is you're going to end up getting a nice collection of fonts and that's going to, uh, now you've got a whole list to, to kind of pick through and stuff. And when you're in the font box, you know, the type text box and Vetric and all, you only have the sample of ABCD, ABCD, one, two, three, and it doesn't really show you a whole lot and everything. So the second site, which others uh, are already probably are already aware of is wordmark.it. I love wordmark. Let me type on the correct keyboard. I keep doing that all the time. Wordmark.it. And wordmark.it helps you choose your creative fonts for your projects and everything. Um, stand by something. Uh, wordmark.it. Give me a second before you continue to work. Make sure I spelled it right. I don't know what's happening with my screen. Bear with me just a second. I'm in some kind of duck, duck, go funkiness. Give me just a moment. Let me switch up to... I don't know what that was all about, but uh, wordmark.it. So... Ignore what was going on. That's my other browser. Uh, I don't know what was going on with it, but uh, this helps you choose your creative font. So you can type in your word or phrase or whatever the case may be, 
and um, allow your browser to show your fonts and everything. Um, and it will show you all of your fonts with that word or phrase that you've typed in. And then now you can go through and actually get a visual of what that word is going to look like or that phrase is going to look like in your project, your creative project and all that you're working on, your sign or what have you. So once you kind of, uh, you know, find the uh, font that you like, uh, the you can click on it to kind of zoom in uh, to see and everything, whatever it may be. You can close, you can do all kinds of things. And so the, um, the name of the font is down below and that's what you wanna look for in your Vetric software. That's what you wanna look for. You wanna go and look for that font uh, once you've kind of picked it out. So word mark, word mark, W-O-R-D-M-A-R-K dot I-T helps you choose fonts for your creative projects. So if you're new to the Vetric software, if you're new to just CAD CAM design or creative creative design, you know, for whatever, laser engraving and all kinds of things, defont.com and wordmark.it should be staples for you. Um, uh, definitely add those to your favorites in your browsers and stuff. Now, when it comes to uh, sign layout and everything, uh, I, I kind of have a, I, I love kind of getting like, absorbing creative ideas and stuff uh, and uh, one of my favorite browser pages to go to online is I like to type in a Google search I like to search for country wood signs and the what I like to do is I just like to see what everyone in the world is doing you know how they're utilizing their fonts how they're doing layout and everything to uh, just create a beautifully unique look and everything. And it really just kind of gets my juices flowing and stuff as far as, uh, you know, um, uh, you know, sign layout. We're not, we're not stuck to just the cookie cutter, um, uh, you know, type in a text and size it up and put it somewhere and that's it we can start to be creative and we can make the text flow uh, or curve or contour, whatever the case may be. Uh, we can have some text carved in, some text raised up. We can, we can do all kinds of creative things. And I just love looking in, at uh, other signs that uh, people are making and just seeing, just seeing the different ways that they're working with, uh, with those signs and stuff. Uh, it's really nice. Um, so, be sure to you know again it's just it's just inspiration right we're always we are inspired by things that we you know run into and see on a daily basis uh whether we're walking down the street or you know uh you know uh shopping online or something we see things all the time that just kind of like oh man that's cool you know and uh we all, it always sometimes for us builders us makers and stuff it sometimes triggers oh i wonder if i could make that or make something like that or what have you and, and everything so you know we can be kind of fun with it um, let's start off with a very uh, simple sign um, and uh, I'm going to I'm going to uh, hopefully uh, help inspire you as well too so here we go let's start off with this first sign that's going to be 30 inches by seven and a quarter uh, it'll be three quarter inches thick and for my project i am going to be touching off on the material surface in my job setup and i will be starting from the bottom left corner in my job setup now let's first before we um talk about uh things and all let's talk about some of our tools so we have a uh, cool tool here called Edit Text Spacing and Curve. This tool will allow us to uh, space our characters if need be. We can reduce spacing between characters or we can increase spacing between characters. We can reduce or increase spacing between lines if we have multiple lines of objects in a, in a text box that we created. But we can also curve our text very simply. So. Imagine if I were to uh, type in, uh, let's go, each day, 
three. And I'm going to just use a basic font for right now. And I want to, uh, here, let's go, I'll go three inches tall. There we go. And I'm going to stretch it. I'm going to hold down my shift key and I'm going to stretch it out a little bit. About like that. Now, with this, with this particular text and everything, there's a couple of things that I can do with it. Uh, number one is I can use my edit text spacing and curve tool. And with that, uh, with that tool, I have two nodes that pop up on the screen here. Uh, one at the top, one at the bottom, they're green in color. And um, the top node allows me to pull that text up into a curve and up to about 180 degrees. And then I can also pull it flat. And the bottom one pulls down into a curve, depending on which way I want to curve, right? So I could curve my text that way. Now, if I need to absolutely uh, curve my text more than that 180 degrees, then my blue nodes, here I have two blue nodes on each side and I have these red nodes as well too. But these blue nodes, we don't pull them up or down, we actually pull them left and right. And when I grab that blue node and pull it to the left, it will wrap that text around further. And when I pull it to the right, it will wrap it around less. So I can go beyond that 180, um, depending on which way I pull that blue node. Now the red nodes, basically we have, by our arc here, we have created a pivot point and the red nodes just help us pivot on that point, you know? So the curve tool, the edit text spacing and curve tool, not only does it allow us to curve our text, you know, we can also space our text by, you know, reducing spacing between letters or if we hold the shift key down, we can increase spacing between letters. And if we had multiple lines, we could increase or reduce the spacing between the lines that way as well too, right? So there's your curve tool, edit text spacing and curve. Now, if I wanted to draw my own curve, whether that curve be an arc or that curve be an actual, you know, type wave, space bar to finish. Um, the, let's go back into my selection tool here. Let me pull this one down here and I'll leave this one up here. So if I wanted to have the text flow with my own curve, I can use the text on a curve tool. All right. For those of you and, and, and ladies and gentlemen, stick with me, bear with me. Uh, this is just the, you know, the rudimentary basics to for those that are just getting started and everything and all and then we're going to get into the actual layout and stuff um, but when i have a vector that i've created a curve that i've created i can use the text on a curve tool okay and so the text on a curve tool uh you'll notice when you first open it up it's grayed out nothing is uh, active that we can use we can't do anything with it until we read the instructions at the top that says select a single line of text and the curve that you want to wrap to. So if I do that, if I select my text and hold my shift key down and select the curve, then it will activate that uh, tool and it will do exactly what I want to do with it. Now, the first little message that you saw pop up was telling me that my curve was too small for my text, so it's sized, it's scaled the text uh, to fit the curve. And now I can, you know, scale that text smaller or larger. I can increase my spacing of my text uh, and letters and everything. I could be above the curve, below on the curve or below it. I could start from the left side of that curve, the right side or the middle, whatever I want to do. And um, I can also keep my text vertical so it stays vertical as it flows on that curve um, and all that. So if I were to select the text uh, and a different curve, we'll shift and select to this one, um, then I can, again, I can edit my spacing and I can have that text flow on whatever curve that I draw, right? Uh, now, 
the cool thing about the tools as of like, I, I don't know if it was like the late nines or tens, but they had the, um, they had the, uh, they have edit, they have improved this tool to where if I deleted my vector, uh, by accident and everything, not by accident, by purpose, I got rid of it cause I've already warped my text. And then I come back and go, Oh man, uh, I have a misspelling and stuff and I need to go back and I need to edit my text because I had a misspelling or something. Instead of begin each day, it was supposed to be beginning each day, right? Well, it will remember, it will remember the curve that it's on uh, and it'll there'll be a virtual curve there that regardless of what I am doing, um, I can, you know, it's going to follow that same format. I don't have to delete and start all over and all that stuff. So that's pretty cool. So um, I really enjoy that uh, and everything. So we can wrap text on a curve, um, whatever curve we happen to draw and everything, or we can just do a simple arc, edit text and spacing and curve tool, uh, either of those two. So now, uh, that's pretty cool, right? So, but beyond that, beyond that, we also have the ability to distort text and objects too, not just text. We also have the ability to use the distort tool, which is located in the transform objects menu that we can distort our text and everything. Um, let's say for instance, on this text here, uh, again, I'm going to, let me just make it a little bit bigger. I'm going to go right about there and I'm going to move it up, 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 up. And let me add some more words in here. So, uh, let's, let's go in, um, uh, let's see here. We'll go with and let's use our Medina font for that. We'll size that one in just a minute. And then let's uh, let's go all capitals with this skin. Uh, Font at. Come over here. The, um, oh, sorry, ladies and gentlemen, hold on a second. Let me get my keyboard. <laughs> Stand by, ladies and gentlemen. Let me get my keyboard. All right, let's go with the back to that font. Now we'll talk about fonts in just a moment. Um, let's see, with a grateful heart. All right, let's make that about one and a half inches tall. Okay, so imagine if you will uh, and by the way, I have some overlaps here. I'm going to weld this particular font uh, and replace it with the vectors of the welded text to get rid of those overlaps and everything. And then I'm going to group it back together. Now, the moment I did that, I converted that font to a vector. It is no longer a font, but it kill, it, it's an object. It can still be distorted and all that wonderful stuff. Um, but uh, it uh, it's no longer a... A font at that point so if I wanted to change the look of the font or something like that then I could uh, I just have to start all over again with that one with that particular word all right so imagine if you will uh, they I want to use the distort tool and what I'd like to do is I'd like the top of my uh, beginning stay I'd like the top to stay straight across but I'd like to create an arc at the bottom of the letters I'd like the letters to have an arc and that's called distortion uh, so with the distort tool, I have three options that I can do. 
I can distort by putting the objects in a bounding box. Now this, uh, the, the way that I like to think of that is, it's like stuffing your object or letters into an envelope. And however you bend or flex or stretch or pull that envelope, your object that's inside is gonna also bend and stretch and flex with it, right? So we can put it in a bounding box. We could uh, ha distort it above a single curve. If we had a line drawn very similar to the wrap on a curve tool, if we had a single line drawn, we could have it uh, you know, uh, distort on that line. Um, if we had two lines drawn, we could have it distort and flow between those two lines as well. Now, in this case, I'm gonna put it in a bounding box. And the bounding box, there are four nodes. Uh, it's a simple rectangular box. There's four nodes, you got your corner nodes and you have your each line, the top, the bottom, and the two sides. Now those lines are dashed uh, and everything, and they can be changed to a line, an arc, or a Bezier curve. So um, on here, I want my top text to stay straight, uh, top of my text to stay straight, but at the bottom, I would like that to arc, so I'm gonna pull arc. And every time you do arc, it always throws it down into a big uh, dish type arc, and that's not what we want. We actually want it to arc upward, so it curves, so the bottom of the text curves upward and everything. And I'm gonna select the top two nodes, and I'm gonna use my up arrow key on the keyboard, and I'm just gonna stretch that a little bit taller. And then I'm gonna take that arc and bend it up a little bit more. And I can take these two nodes, and I'm gonna use my down arrow and kind of pull that down. There we go. So my top text, my top of my text is straight. That small arc there, what that small arc does is it gives me, let's close this tool. Uh, it gives me a place that I can put my uh, word with. I can bring a grateful heart up on here and I can go ahead and hold down my shift key. I'm gonna stretch this out a little bit more, about like that. And then I'm gonna take a rectangle and I'm going to draw a small, narrow rectangle here. Uh, I want to make sure that the left side of my rectangle is, uh, you know, in line with the side of my B there. Uh, I'm going to back this off just a little bit. And then I'm going to mirror that to the other side. I'm going to create a mirrored copy, flip about job center, and flip it horizontally. And so there's a nice, very elegant, little, simple country layout. And country chic is a thing, you know, kind of farmhouse chic, uh, you know, is a thing and all, but uh, it's just a nice little layout sign. So just a very small amount of distortion. Now, if we were to look at, um, let's take a look at, uh, let me see if it will open properly. It may or may not. No, let's see if it'll let me. Let me just go look at it online here. So let's go. Uh, Windcraft Miami Marlins Country sign. Wonderful. And let me pull this up. All right. You see this example here that I've got on the screen and everything. You see the word country. You see how it's bowed at the top of country and bowed at the bottom of country. Uh, and then Marlins is kind of compressed. You know, it's arcing down on the word Marlins and then arcing up from underneath, right? So they kind of it's just a nice little distortion to uh, you know lay out the signs so the things flow together. Um, that when you see things you know like that or uh, and all, that's just a simple distortion. Let me close this. I've got four drivers out of date that I got to update. Um, but so there is uh, one sign there. Now let's take and let's move that to the side. We'll talk about these little graphics I have over here in just a moment. Um, let's talk about layout. Now we're going to use one phrase, one phrase, but we're going to lay it out three different ways just to kind of show you that, uh, you know, 
you can be a little bit uh, uh, creative um, with, uh, with the way things are. So uh, first text is going to be, we'll go here and uh, I'm gonna do country roads and I want a nice um, font let's go four inches tall let's bring that over here and then take me home and we're gonna go with a basic font I'll even go just a simple Times New Roman. We'll make that about one and a half inches tall. Go here. All right, so first things first, let me get Country Roads uh, centered on the board. And then I'm going to use the up arrow key on my keyboard and just move it up a little bit. Here. Uh, take me home. I'm going to make sure that I'm centered left to right on my material. Okay. And I'm not worried that uh, my font is overlapping. I'll end up uh, welding those two objects together uh, and stuff uh, as well. But um, the uh, first layout I'd like to do is I'd like to bring this up. And again, uh, I'd have some kind of little decorative flourish. I don't have any flourishes right now. Uh, so I'm just gonna kind of create something uh, with, not with that tool. Uh, I'm going to uh, just create a curve. I'm going to offset that curve. Uh, it doesn't matter what direction, inward or outward. I'm going to go a small um, too many decimal points there. Oh, six, two, five. Make sure you have the vector that you want to offset selected. Uh, that's not big enough. Let's go, um, point one, two, five. Uh, point one, eight, seven, five. There we go. All right, I'm going to select these and I'm going to join them with a straight line on both ends here. And then I'm going to hold down the control key and I'm going to pull the control key down just a little bit. Uh, and I'm going to take this and just copy it over to the other side. Okay. Now, that is an ugly flourish. I know you can say it, uh, but uh, you know I would probably do something a little bit more flory, flowery, and all that stuff. And I'd probably find you know a vector online or something that I could use to help me along with that. But stick with me, bear with me. Just know that I know that you know that I know that you know that it's ugly, right? Uh, so it could be better. Um, all right. So with this, let's go ahead and I want to weld this text here to get rid of the overlaps. And then I also want to convert this font to a curve. That'll break that up. And then I can do some trimming here uh, to uh, the overlaps to kind of connect things together because you're somewhat uh, creating an illusion um, that one is overlapping another kind of thing or just kind of blending in with it. Now, let's go ahead and let's create this sign. V-Carve Toolpath. Um, I will not need a flat depth on that or an clearance tool. All right, I'm going to turn the preview simulation down for time's sake and everything. So um, we'll let that go through. And again, now this is this is one phrase, right? Country roads take me home. 
version one. Okay. So let that kind of uh, play out. Uh, and we have just a super simple country sign. Now imagine if I were to throw this on a, you know, a distressed uh, white piece of wood or something, <clears throat> just again, farmhouse chic, right? Uh, and, and everything, uh, you know, so uh, paint a board white, beat the hell out of it with all kinds of tools and gadgets and everything to distress it. Uh, throw it on the table, carve it, and, uh, you know, paint it, what have you. Um, so, again, I'd probably use a more decorative or creative flourish or something. Not those wavy lines that just uh, doesn't do it for me, but it's just to give you an example. Now, let's take this a different way. Let's go ahead and um, uh, I'll pull this up here. So that's going to be version one. Let's go back to our text box and let's go back to country roads. Again, we'll use our um, Medina font. This will be four inches tall. This time I'm gonna stretch country roads out. I'm going to center it on the board, okay? And then I'm going to add in the second text, uh, the second part of the phrase. Uh, we'll just use a take me home. Uh, this will be about one inch tall, uh, 1.5. All right, so we're gonna go right about here, stretch this out a little bit. And now this one, excuse me, I'm going to convert, uh, do a weld on these overlaps and get rid of those overlaps and everything. And I'm gonna take country roads um, and I'm going to no I'm actually I'll leave country roads there for a moment but I'm just gonna take this and bring that there right about like that and so this will be again very simple version number two right so B carve sign I don't need a clearance tool, calculate, reset the preview, preview the visible tool pass. Okay, now, and again, we'll let that uh, simulation run real quickly. Um, now, the last and final way that we're gonna do this, so this is kind of offset the take me home a little bit to the left, country roads being the main uh, you know, uh, the main feature, the main wording and everything. Again, uh, you know, just a nice, very simple farmhouse chic layout. Just trying to get your juices flowing. This is minor stuff right now uh, and everything, but um, just something to think about. Now, want to say something uh, before I do number three. When it comes to fonts and everything, I, I love using different fonts in a project, but I kind of have a rule, a cutoff. Uh, you really... Uh, for me, I don't use any more than three different types of font in a project. It could be kind of just a little bit more distracting than anything. Um, there's a lot of signs that have a lot of different cool fonts. Some are big, some are big, some are small, you know, and things like that. And um, the, uh, for me, I love that as well, that look and everything. But uh, if I'm going to use different fonts, I try it. Three is my cap you know, figure out, you know, what it is for you. And all, there's also some kind of etiquette. I think uh, if you look at, not etiquette, I don't know if that's the right word, but there's there's kind of a standard. If you ever, you know, you know, in sign making, you know, what are the maximum types of fonts you would have in a logo or a sign or, or what have you and see what they say uh, and everything. But for me, three is kind of my maximum. All right, country roads, uh, take me home. Now this time, uh, for this one, 
I'm going to take uh, the word country and I'm going, this is going to be version three. I'm going to just uh, lower this oops, down here. And roads, I'm going to kind of bring that back a little bit to kind of create some sense of unity there. And then take me home is actually going to be here. Let me make it a little bit smaller. I want that E and H. I don't want it on top of the T like that. I want it, but I want that E and H kind of somewhat centered there. And um, then I want to take the whole thing and center it on the material. Okay. Now over here, there could be a nice little flourish. Let me see if I can, I, I, I want to do this right. Uh, let me see if I can um, stand by one second. Flourish vector. All right, it would help if I am using the right keyboard again. Flourish vector. Oh, let's see. Country roads. I just need a long uh, flourish. Let me see what I can come up with. In short order something that's a little bit uh that's not too too fancy because again it's kind of a little bit of a farmhouse sign you know type of thing and uh, let's stand by we'll just go with this uh save image as All right, let me import this image over here. Again, it's not gonna be the best one or the choice. I know, I know, I know, but let's see. Uh, let's open up that image and let's grab it here. Okay, uh, let's zoom into it. It's really blurry, very low quality. I'm not, you know, being choosy on this one. Uh, we're gonna trace it. I'm going to pull this to 75. I'm going to turn my noise filter up to four. Preview, apply, and close. I'm going to delete the image. And I'm going to fix. I'm going to go to node editing. And I'm going to delete this point here. And I'm going to smooth, if it lets me. Smooth that point, kind of smooth that out just to clean it up a bit. And then I'm going to flip the whole thing. I'm going to hit the letter H on my keyboard, flip the whole thing that way and stretch it out. So, All right, so let's go ahead and select that. V carve tool path, no clearance tool needed. 60 degree V bit, calculate, reset the preview, preview the visible tool path. Hey Sylvia, how are you doing? All right, in that, let that simulation run out. Uh, and um, again, we have a nice little, you know, distressed board. It doesn't have to be distressed. You know, it could be whatever, you know, color, uh, um, you know, wood you would like it on. You know, it could be some, you know, uh, weathered pallet wood, right? To just, again, farmhouse chic could be creative and what have you, but very simple, right? Uh, you know, it's all about, um, we have three very distinctly different looking signs. They all say the same thing. It's just how the words are positioned, how they're changed or distorted, or, you know, uh, the little 
you know, uh, flourishes and things that we add to it, we can really be kind of creative. Now I wanted to go back um, to, let's open up another sheet here. Let's set up another sheet. And I want this sheet to be more vertical uh, than horizontal. So in my setup here, I'm gonna make this sheet, um, let's go, let's go uh, 14 inches wide and let's go more vertical like that wonderful small sign but it will do all right now like we saw when I showed you that Miami country right that Miami country sign um, the going back to the distort tool uh, let's go let's type out our text and I'm just gonna kind of uh, just kind of emulate that Miami 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 country and let's more of a block type font let's find a more of a, uh, a, a block type font let's come down here to the F's and that's too blocky hold on a second uh, let's go all the way down uh, That'll work. All right, in here, uh, I'm going to, I've got a text block here. I'm gonna actually break the block into individual lines, two separate lines, because I want Miami to be about as big as the word country. And I'm going to distort Miami. I'm gonna open up the distort tool. I'm going to put it in a bounding box that's restricting it in this bounding box. And I'm gonna change the bottom to an arc and we'll uh, pull that arc up a little bit. The top one, we'll bring that to an arc, pull that in a little bit, and um, let's go a little bit more here and here. So that's how they got that, you know, kind of that condensed look. And then of course, opposite of that, uh, let's go with, um, stand by. select that and this one was a little bit domed right so we'll go an arc and we'll just give it that roundness so it kind of flows with the curve of the Miami and then they also had this bottom arcing a bit you know to give it kind of that look right and it almost has almost kind of the look of a football if you will so the distort tool really gives us a lot of flexibility. And this is just lines and arcs, right? We haven't even done any cool wavy curves and stuff like that, which we're about to do. But um, so the distort tool really kind of takes us from our cookie cutter text where we can lay it out, curve it. Uh, we can run it on arcs and, and curves and things. Uh, the distort tool really gives us the ability to be just fun and, and, and flow, flowing and everything. Um, let's take as an example let's delete that and i'm gonna go r and let's go to let's see let's make that a little bit bigger and So imagine if I was making a nice little country sign with a with one of my grandmother's favorite recipes and everything, um, uh, or or something. And it, instead of R, it could be grandma's you know famous recipe or something. But I want the uh, family recipe to be distorted a bit. And so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to weld it together to get rid of the overlaps. I'll do the same thing with the word R and everything. And then family recipe, I'm going to distort that by putting it in a bounding box again. And I'm gonna take this side of the box and these two nodes up here, and I'm gonna bring them up, so kind of at an angle here. So it's kind of flowing 
in this direction. And I'm gonna take the two bottom nodes and I'm going to use the down arrow and kind of just give me a little bit more height there. But what I'd like to do now is I'm going to, I'd like this to kind of flow into that, like a, like a banner almost. So I'm gonna turn these uh, top line and bottom line to Bezier curves. And I'm gonna select these uh, two nodes here on this. And I'm gonna use my up arrow to kind of pull that up. something about maybe like that. And then I'm gonna take these two nodes and use the down arrow. And what I'd like, what I'm looking for is I'd like to, so when I was originally here, I was kind of overlapping and I'm bringing this down to kind of create that bit of space there because I'm gonna be moving the word R. Let me get out of that tool. I'm gonna make it smaller once I select it all. I'm gonna make it just a bit smaller and I'm gonna actually have it move over to where it's almost sitting in the curve of this S, or this F, sorry, um, here. And I'm actually gonna go into node editing on this F uh, here and the um, I can't I can't edit this because it's in that box, right? I tried to edit that up, but it's in that box. I have to right click on it on the box, and I have to um, well select it first. I have to convert it to curves. What that does is it converts it to a vector. It breaks it out of the distortion envelope, and now I can work with you know uh, the things individually and stuff. And what I'd like to do with this F is I'd like to tone it down a little bit. Um, so I'm going to kind of bring this down a bit. And on the curve here, I wanna go ahead and smooth this point here and remove this point. And that way I can kind of create a bit of a pocket, if you will, that R can nestle into. Um, just a little bit of spacing there. And then on here, I'm going to, uh, because of the flow and everything. I've already got kind of the flow that I want here. I'm not going to change that, but I'm actually going to uh, take and tone down the L. I'm just going to select all this. I'm literally just going to move it down. Didn't need to, but I just kind of, it, it doesn't need to be sticking up in there, right? So um, it doesn't look like much. It's a very, oops, it doesn't look like much but um, it uh, just kind of gives a, a nice little bit of uh, creativeness uh, to a, you know, a heading area. And then, you know, of course, from there, we have whatever the, uh, you know, oops, <laughs> sorry, hold on, undo. We have whatever the, uh, the recipe is, you know, down in this area. So let's go the other direction. Oh, wrong direction. You know, and of course you think of the lines as being uh, the text, right? So the, um, just a nice little way to be creative and flow and everything uh, with that. Now, uh, we're gonna create a sign, so that will set this one aside. So let's move this aside here. 
And we're actually gonna make a sign here and it's gonna use multiple fonts. Remember I said mine are kind of three, but um, uh, I'm going to type out uh, the words and, um, and then we'll, uh, we'll get it we'll get it all laid out and organized and everything so I'm gonna um, for this first font I'm just gonna use this uh, now I'm leaving that word by itself because I want to change I want to be able to change that font up a little bit uh, or you know distort it or what just that so I'm gonna click over and to kind of almost like creating a new box. And uh, the second part of this is gonna be, uh, can't, by above. stop there I want a different font on this uh, for can can and then come back over here all right so on here I'm going to uh, lay this out Let's close the text tool. I'll change up the fonts and everything after I kind of get things, you know, somewhat uh, laid out. I'm going to break this text block up into lines uh, so I can work with each line of text independently and I can change things up, stretch things, make things bigger and all that stuff. Uh, but uh, I'm going to go here. I want these two to be somewhat aligned. So like, I mean, you know, just like it's a font. So I am gonna use my guidelines to help me out to kind of get me started. Um, and uh, I'll bring this down to here. I'll also bring this down on there. So it's somewhat in line. If I try to use the alignment tool, uh, align the two items to, together and everything, because the Y is sticking down farther, it'll kind of throw it off. Uh, but, um, uh, what I want to do with the word you is I want to change the font up uh, and let's go down to nope hold on a moment nope oh dude I think no okay I do not want the word you all capitals that's where my problem is uh, it's supposed to be y-o-u there we go and let's go back to um, the get back down there not the believe it I want the You can't buy love, love. We're going to stretch that out a little bit. And let's change that up a little. I want a little bit of a creativeness, right? So I'm looking at you, I'm looking at my screen, I'm looking at you, looking at my screen. All right, so sorry, I'm not making eye contact with y'all guys, girls, sorry about that. Um, let's get... Uh, a nice font. Throw that there. Um, we're gonna go, but right underneath uh, the L, uh, the 
but you can. I want can to kind of stand out or be a little bit uh, bigger. But what I want to do with can is I actually want it to be all capitalized. Um, C A N. I want it kind of like a, almost like a kid's handwriting. Let me see if I can find a font. Just like that. And I want to break it up into uh, vectors because I actually want, let me move this where it belongs. I'm gonna have it right about here, but I actually want the N to be just a little bit off. You know, I don't want it to be just quite lined up, just something a little off on it, just to kind of throw it off, okay? And then uh, rescue it, I'm gonna move up here for right now, but then I wanna take Let's grab, we'll do it two ways. Um, I've got a silhouette that I can use or I got a carving. I'm gonna do it both ways and we'll see which one I like better. Let's go here, turn that off and I'm gonna copy that to sheet two. And let's throw this one on first. All right, rescue it needs to be here. Can needs to be there. Okay. All right, let's get everything uh, centered on the material. Align to center. And uh, I'm going to take All right, so option number one would be to uh, this being a V-carve, uh, no flat depth, no limit, anything. Let's go with a regular piece of wood this time. We'll just go with maple. Preview the visible toolpath. Hey, what's happening? Thank you, Keith Kessler. I appreciate that, man. I appreciate that. I got to start paying attention to my chat. Uh, thank you very much, Keith, for that. Um, um, yeah, Sylvia, thanks for the thanks for liking the recipe idea. Um, uh, Big Daddy Fish, call him out. 38 watch and only nine likes, right? The likes help me out, ladies and gentlemen. So give a thumbs up. Keith, man, thanks for the super chat. Uh, uh, yeah, so I appreciate that. Appreciate that. And, uh, and uh, yeah, I'm glad you like that. So um, the, let's, let's get this a little bit more uh, float out here. That'll be good. And uh, right, so so there's option one. Option two is instead of the cut out, the carve out like this, right? Um, and everything uh, is we could take that out, set that aside. We could go with a kind of a silhouette. Now on this one with a silhouette, let's bring that here. Let's take rescue. It bring that back just a little bit. Oh, let's move him over just a little. All right, so when we're doing this, um, the text and everything, I don't want to limit the carve uh, and everything, so I'm going to do a V carve toolpath for just the text. 
uh, no uh, flat depth, no limit for it. Let it calculate out. And let me reset that to a blank board. And then the silhouette, I do want to limit that cut. Um, and I want to Uh, close that B carve tool path uh, I'm gonna set a flat depth for me I'm gonna go just an eighth of an inch uh, and I'm gonna use a um, quarter inch end mill along with an eighth to kind of clean up anywhere in the flat areas and stuff and calculate that preview the visible tool path let that run out and uh, and I'll so again, for me, three fonts. I've got the script font, I've got the little handwritten can font, and then I've got my, um, actually in this one, I actually have four fonts. The can't buy, but you rescue it is all one font. Can, I just wanted a little bit, something a little bit creative with that uh, is a different font. And so you, I kind of broke my own rule there, uh, is not the same. So I'm going to actually make it uh, kind of match my kids font there. Broke my own rule. Um, and again, whatever works. Okay. And let's go I'll keep it lowercase and all. I just want can to be capitalized. So this could be a little bit uh, up, you know, that now I'll have to line up and everything. But something fun like that. Now when we're with this, uh, we have just a silhouette, right? Uh, and everything and um, just something, you know, nice and creative, right? Use your, use your, um, <laughs> Robert says he who makes the rules can break them. Uh, use use some creativity and uh, you know have some fun with the with the signs and everything and you know see what you can do. Let's uh, let's put this aside here and um, <laughs> let's uh, think outside the box a little bit. Imagine, if you will, um, that you have a sign. Here, let me, I, I don't really need to draw this out. Imagine you have a sign um, that might be, be a, a kitchen sign or something, you know, for, for a kind of a country kitchen. But uh, uh, it'll say, what the? And then down below heck is going on right or or you know whatever you want to say but between the what the uh not and the heck is supposed to be in there but you know is going on you can actually like put a fork like you know an actual real fork utensil you know you can have that uh you know epoxy to the board you know what the fork is going on All right, anyway, so, you know, have some fun, be creative and that kind of stuff. But, um, um, yeah, I'm a dog person too, Rod, absolutely. Uh, but I uh, just wanted to give the cats some love because I have cats and dogs. Um, but, yeah, you can, you know, all of my animals are rescued uh, and everything. But um, uh, <laughs> you can have some fun. All right, we're going to go a little bit taller now. All right, we're going to go a little bit taller with this sign. And just, to, again, uh uh, work with me here. Let's go a little bit taller. I'm going to change the size of this sign up uh, sheet two, and um, This is going to be kind of a wall art wall hanging sign uh, Let's go to edit and on the uh, let me see here I'm gonna go Let's go 14 inches wide 14 and let's go 28 inches
inches long. That'll be good. All right, let's move the uh, our recipe sign off of there. But again, remember now the R recipe, those lines are meant to be like, you know, your text, your recipe or whatever that you can do but, uh, uh, and everything. All right, so um, let's do some drawing now. So here I'm going to take a rectangle. This project would be cut out, profile cut out uh, and everything. Um, I'm going to go in, let's get it centered on the board. I'm going to go into node editing mode and I'm going to insert a point right in the center here. And I'm going to insert a point right in the center down here. I'm going to take this point and select it. I'm going to use my up arrow key and just kind of uh, bring that up just a little bit. Um, actually, I need to, let me stop myself. Um, before I move that up, I'm going to insert a point right about here. Now I'm going to uh, mirror that horizontally and Everything I do on this side, let me see if I'm right or am I wrong. I am wrong. Okay. Oh, work with me. No. All right. So I thought I had a new trick, but I don't uh, because it's not a, a, an actual thing. Um, so let me actually grab a guideline here, snap it to this point, and I want to uh, create a parallel guide. thought I had a new trick, but I'll have to uh, figure out how to use that uh, properly. Let's see here. I want to move over to the right. Um, one inch and I'm going to take this guideline here and I want to move it to the left negative one inch all right at that point now I can go into node editing mode and I can insert a point evenly on here and here if anybody knows that uh, mirror uh, vertically or horizontally tool with the node editing um, I thought everything I did on the left side would mirror to the right side, uh, and I was incorrect with that. Um, but that's all right. Now I can take this and I can move this up. Uh, I want to bring this up just a little bit, about like that. And here I want to delete this point, and I want to delete this point. And here I want to turn this into an arc. go about like that. This one I want to turn into an arc. About like that. And what I can do is uh, just to see how far I'm on or off or what have you, um, I'm going to draw a line right here. And I'm connecting kind of to a point, a center point there. And I'm going to actually mirror that line over to the other side. Okay. And that kind of uh, shows me where I'm just a bit off. Let me go back into node editing. And uh, my midpoint should be, you know, and of course, hold on a second. Control Z. 
It would help if I snapped my line to the point right there. All right, let me get out of note editing. Here we go. Snap there. All right, let's try that one more time. Let's mirror that to the other side. And in node editing, well, that bugger, here, I'll just do this. Snap to there. Okay, and then on this point here, I am actually going to go with the fillet tool to help me with this. All right, now that by far is the ugliest surfboard I've ever seen in my life. But um, work with me. Let's go with a busy A curve. Busy A curve. All right. Let's get rid of the guidelines, and we're going to call that my surfboard, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, on the surfboard here, there will be a profile cut to cut that out. Let me grab a couple of things. Uh, let's go over to sheet one. I'm going to grab my uh, flip-flops and my palm tree. And I want to move those over to sheet two. All right. Now, with this here, I want to, with the font, uh, I want a... Um, Kind of a fun beachy type font uh, for everyone. I want a beachy type font. Uh, so I want to go, uh, this is this is a we'll size it down in properly in just a moment. Alrighty, alrighty. Um, let's throw in my palm trees. Let me size these up here. Let me take this palm, size this up. there mirror that to the other side okay now I created a big text block with this I'm going to right click and I'm going to break that text block into lines uh, I want to make this is uh, just a slightly bit smaller and flip I want to make just a slight bit bigger. Move that up kind of here. Flop. Make that just slightly bit bigger. And I want to kind of move that here. And then zone, I'm going to bring up to about like that. Now, I want to break uh, this font up into vectors, and I want to break this font up into vectors. Convert to curves. And I want to delete the L from each one of those. And then I'm going to take uh, this left flip-flop here and this right flip-flop there. All right, let's go in and size things more appropriately. So this one's gonna get sized down. 
this one's going to get sized down. We'll bring that in about like that, right? So, um, you know, could do a whole little beach scene, you know, or something right in here too, but this is where I would paint it, right? I would paint it kind of like a, you know, little ocean scene, little blues, you know, sunsets or what have you, right? So, um, but uh, let's go ahead and let's V-carve this. So V-carve toolpath. Uh, no flat depth, uh, no end mills, calculate, preview the visible toolpath. Hey, Don, how are you doing? Thank you for joining us. All right, let's take our profile cut and cut this out. Z equals 0.75. We're going to use a quarter inch end mill on the outside line. Now we're going to add tabs to this, but I'm not going to add tabs for preview purposes only. Um, and again, uh, you know, I, I make a better for any of you that are surfers or beach folk or what have you. If you're, if you know, don't, 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 don't make fun of my, my surfboard, you know. Um, but, uh, just to, just to give you some ideas. And again, here, uh, this area here, it would be actual hand painted stuff. You know, I, you know, uh, paint some nice, uh, beiges and blues, you know, like the water and in the sky, little oranges in the you know, sunset. Really, you could really have some fun with it kind of thing. Um, you could do all kinds of things, but just stuff like that. Right. So this is all about layout design distortion and you know uh, how we can have fun so we took this font that's kind of uh kid like font you know whatever the case may be um very beaching thanks <laughs> um and we uh did a play on words we took the l's out and threw some flip-flops in there you know we have the set the left and the right flip-flop right uh, and um, it's positioned almost like someone's stepping, right? The, the way the, the two flip-flops are positioned and everything, so like a stride. And it's just a matter of uh, having some fun with it, right? So again, these are very rudimentary samples that I'm showing you and everything, but I just want to kind of give you something, you know, fun to work with, right? Okay, so um, uh, there's that. All right, let's go to a new sheet entirely. And this sheet is gonna be large and rectangular. And um, when it comes to my uh, large rectangular sheets, I'm gonna start off with a square first. So in this case, I'm going to go 24 by 24. by three quarter inches thick. Now, the golden ratio. Uh, hey, Doug the doll, man. Thank you very much for that super chat. I appreciate it very much. Thank you so much, man. That's, that's, y'all have no idea. Those super chats really help out. Uh, they really, really do. Um, uh, the golden ratio, you know, uh, these rectangles are used, you know, they've been used since the dawn of time, right? Uh, and they're just very pleasing shapes uh, and everything. Um, and when it comes to rectangular shapes and everything, I love trying to uh, visually, if I'm making a sign, I kind of want to try to adhere, if I can, to that golden ratio, which is basically taking either our length or width dimension uh, and uh, multiplying it by uh, 1.618. I believe 1.618. There's a lot more numbers of that, um, but uh, it is 1.618 is kind of, that'll get you close enough. Um, yeah, 1.618. And uh, for me, visually when I'm drawing it out, uh, and you may or may not know this, you probably do, but 
if we took a rectangle uh, here, and uh, I'm just going to draw a rectangle here, the size of my board. And if I take a line item, a line, and I snap to the center of my board and I draw a line to the top right corner, space bar to finish. If I rotate or pivot that line, that will give me the golden ratio. It'll give me the, the golden ratio to the width versus the length. So if I rotate this, uh, let's go to the rotate tool and I'm going to take the pivot point and I'm going to drag that pivot point right down to the bottom here. Uh, and I'm going to rotate that line straight down. And what that does is now I can take the rectangle tool here and I can snap to that end of that line. And that size right there, that length and width combination is the golden ratio. Um, and um, it's just, uh, for me, it leads to a more pleasing uh, looking sign. So uh, the size of this sign is uh, 38.8 by 24. So let's go in the uh, my sheet and edit that to 38.8. And I could go 0.875 or three quarters. You know, I don't have to be exactly 0.8. It doesn't matter if I'm close. So I'll go 0.375, 38.75. And that will, uh, I'm just within there, but still within a nice close enough proximity for what I want. So that's going to be my sign. And um, anyway, you didn't need a math lesson, right? Uh, but, uh, you know, we can take our our width and multiply by 1.618 and it would give us our, our length uh, in all too as well too. But I, I just draw the line from the center to the corner, rotate it flat, and that gives me the length and width combination. All right, there you go. All right, the things you know. All right, let's go ahead and we are going to actually create our own frame. Now the, the, the sign is going to play a role in the layout and design and everything. And this is going to be, um, this is going to be that. Yeah. So, uh, let's see here. We're going to go with a rectangle shape first and on the rectangle shape, I'm going to, um, basically kind of be an offset of my board. So I'm going to take my X needs to be centered for the center of my rectangle. So I'm going to divide that by two because I'm starting in the bottom left corner. So I need to find the center of my board, right? And then my Y divided by two, which is 24 divided by two is 12 equals, oops, let's try typing in a number before. All right, and that'll give me my center point there. And then I want to take my X and I want to subtract four inches, five inches. I want to subtract five inches from X and I want to subtract, I want to subtract two and a half inches from y, y minus 2.5 equals. And I want to create that rectangle there. And I actually wanted to go in a little bit more. So what I'll do is I'll keep the aspect ratio uh, and I'll just bring that down just a bit more. There we go. All right. On the sides here, on the sides, so I'm gonna have, let's grab an arc or a, a ellipse tool. Let's grab an ellipse tool, not an arc. We're gonna use, kind of create an arc, if you will, but um, we're going to, on the center of my board here, we're going to come in and let me pull this down. 
here. I want to, on my sides, I'm going to snap to the side of that. Size that there. I actually kind of want to snap to the sides. Let me redo this first one. Working with two keyboards is kicking my butt. I got to get that situation fixed one day. Okay, should be snapped to the sides there. Now I want to take these, uh, this shape here and I want to uh, do both of them at the same time. I'm going to hold my shift key down. And I want to kind of, I'm holding that shift key. I want to kind of bring them up just a little bit almost I could have used an ellipse tool for this but I just want to kind of come up here and I want to um, from here I want to create an arc so from here to here and my radius, I got to pay attention to my radius and everything. Um, 4.19 is the radius, so I'm going to do the same thing over here. And I could also mirror too. Uh, I don't have to really pay that hard of attention. I could also mirror. Uh, but let's go. You can argue with me. Negative. 4.19, enter, oh, all right, so it's not going to let me do that, so I want this to be exactly right, let me take this and mirror it, I'll be smart about it, there we go, and um, I'm going to straight line, from here, the end of this, straight up to here. Space bar to finish. I'll mirror that one as well. All right. Um, and all of this. I'm going to mirror horizontally or vertically. All right, let's do some trimming and everything here. So let's get rid of this, 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 and that here and here. Working, working, working. Uh, I want to get rid of that and keep that. All right. It looks goofy now, but bear with me. Trust me. Trust, trust, trust. All right. I want to take this vector. I want to offset it inward. And so I'm going to make my frame. Uh, I'm going to offset inward and I'm going to go in. Oops. Hold on, I got to disconnect here. I've got one vector that did not join with the rest of them. So let's go to the join tool. And you can see that I've got two separate vectors selected, but they're still open. Uh, if I go in and look at this vector here, there's an overlap right there where it didn't trim properly back to here. So I could try to take my scissors and trim that away, uh, but I'll just come back and put that back. 
same thing here. If I trim that, it should bring it to there. And it should join that together. Good. All right, let's offset this inward. Now I want my frame uh, around here and everything. Um, I want a one inch frame. So I'm gonna offset inward one inch. Uh, I want sharp corners and everything. And the, um, that's about as sharp as corner as I'm gonna get because I didn't give myself a whole lot of room here. Let me see, let me see. I wanted to give myself a little bit more room. That's all right, we'll do that. Offset one inch, that's fine. Then I'm gonna take some circles and I'm gonna try to I should have created my offsets before I did all my trimming, but I'm a goofball. Bear with me. All right, let me mirror that to the other side. Okay. All right, now the text that I wanna put in here, um, this is gonna be almost like a ranch sign, if you will, uh, uh, you know, a farm type ranch type sign and everything. So there are gonna be some initials in here. And uh, this is going to be, it's not really gonna be a, a ranch sign, but it's gonna be similar to kind of the layout and stuff uh, for me. So uh, this will be the, uh, what I wanna do first, let's do the, letter R and this is I want a nice elegant font for this uh, bear with me a second I want a nice kind of uh, oh god uh, just a nice looking uh, font let me see here more blocky more straight but very masculine if you will uh, in a sense um, I don't want anything that looks collegiate, like a college or all. Um, and I'm scrolling through the fonts when I should be using wordmark.it to help me choose my fonts, uh, which we talked about in the beginning. But um, I'm just blowing this in the wind, right? And uh, old Alfie. Let's go no old Alfie I got a pass on old Alfie we're gonna go back to the O's and let's see if old nope old Erica the olds are not doing it for me we got to go young let's see here um, Hold down the control key and bring that down there. And um, my next letter, that font height, by the way, I want to, I want to copy that. All right. So um, let's paste. 
font height. Now, this is where I want the O or the W centered in the center of this, and I'll, I'll shape the O's to match. Uh, so I want it centered in there, and then I'm going to shape this accordingly to match. About the same trail there. I'm going to take this and I'm going to mirror it to the other side, but I'm going to delete this one first. Okay. And I want to make sure the R is centered in there. Select the R first, select the circle last, so the R will align to the center of that last object. Okay. And, um, now we're going to do the text across the top. We're going to come in and use our edit text spacing and curve tool and we're going to just pull a very slight curve got to size it down it's a little bit too big right now but we're going to just pull a super slight curve nothing crazy we want it we don't have a big arc here or anything like that but it needs to fit so let's go to our size hold down that shift key keep it kind of centered let's get that up into position Now, with a font like this, um, I'm not going to, I've got my, my font here, but here I'm gonna change. I do not want to use this font throughout the whole thing, uh, but I do want kind of a Western feel to it. Uh, so I'm gonna come down to my railway uh, type font. Okay, I'm gonna stretch it. Not that much. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, Big Daddy Fish, thank you very much. Here we go. What we're gonna do, what we're doing now is we're going to be a little bit creative here. We're gonna have some text be carved in, some text raised up, okay? So uh, the Royal Raggins uh, Farms are going to be, uh, I gotta get the, uh, uh, I'll, I'll, do, I'll do Royal Wagon Farm House. Uh, so I gotta get that word in there. Bear with me just a second. Farm. I think farmhouse is one word. Y'all throw out the vote. Is this farmhouse one word or is that two separate words? Farmhouse. Farmhouse. When I say it like that, it's one word, but is it two is it technically two separate words or is it one word? Give me uh give me some feedback on that. Alright, this is gonna be the edit text spacing and curve tool. We're gonna pull that to a slight curve as well. Doesn't the curves don't have to match or anything, but what I'm trying to do is just get it to flow in here a little bit. Uh, is farmhouse one word or two? Somebody let me know so I know if I have my H needs to be capitalized or not. One word. Okay, good. Wonderful. All right. So uh, we've got that. Now I need um, I need 
some good flourishes in here and everything. I really need some. And so what I'm going to do is um, we're going to utilize a kind of a, I don't know what you would call it, but um, let's go with, <laughs> I, I, I just uh, typed in in my search kind of a Western flourish. And uh, I don't know if that's actual thing, but that's what I typed in. Let's go to save image as and save that. All right, let's import that vector, that image. It's really small. And I'm, again, I'm just pulling, you know, I'm not really right now for the class. I'm not focusing on quality as far as, as, far as resolution on these images and stuff. Um, I'm just pulling in what I can grab really quickly and um, they will serve the purpose for preview only. All right. So this is going to go here. It's going to get sized up. We're almost done with this. Let me just get it uh, here. And then we're going to mirror this to the other side, flipping it vertically there. And here, we're gonna kind of follow this curve with a distortion that we were distorting and everything. And um, uh, the uh, we're going to follow that kind of with a distortion or what have you. Um, and let's go with our text. Now, this sign could, you know, pretty much be uh, like, like I said, the ranch sign or whatever, but, uh, you know, uh, where there would be some type of address or something in there. Uh, it could be, you know, whatever whatever you want it to be. Um, the, uh, for me, I'm, I'm making it a welcome sign. So we're gonna use the word, uh, we're not gonna use the saddlebag, I'm changing up the font, uh, but we're gonna use the word welcome. I'm gonna go all capital letters here. I'm not gonna use the saddlebag, the same as the two. This one's gonna get changed up, so there's gonna be my three fonts, if you will. Um, but we're gonna go with this. I do, I still want kind of a, you know, a bit of a masculine type font uh, that, uh, that doesn't, you know, um, that uh, looks good and stands out and everything, but uh, isn't too blocky, like a college, you know, kind of thing. So bear with me one moment. Now this one I will use, I will utilize wordmark.it. Uh, so bear with me, let me get back to here. Uh, wordmark.it and it's all capital letters, welcome. Come in here, cause I have thousands of fonts to go through and stuff. And so uh, these are all the fonts uh, currently on my computer. I want something, I don't want that saddlebag that's gonna be the top words in the farmhouse word and everything that, um, and saddlebag is a font that is available on defont.com as well. It's almost kind of like the railroad IT font and all. Um, I wanna go, let me go back up here. for it okay now all right the Barris Saren welcome I kind of like the way those L's and E's look on that uh, let's see here that's college 
The cast iron would be pretty cool as a raised font. Yeah, let's let's do the cast iron. That'll be kind of creative. Let's go to the cast iron font. So um, go up to the C's or down to the C's. That might be something. Let's size it up and we'll distort it and see what we got there. Let's size this up. Center it. Okay, I'm going to use uh, the shift key. Holding that in, I'm going to bring that in just a little bit, kind of condense it. I'm going to go to the distort tool. can put it in a bounding box. I'm going to take these two nodes right here, the top two nodes, and I'm going to use the up arrow key, and I'm going to bring them up into the area of this flourish, and then I'm going to change this line to an arc. It's going to get crazy, but I want to bring it back down, and I want it to kind of flow with that flourish. So we're going to bring that down. And so I want just kind of a somewhat of a flow there. Same thing, I'm gonna grab these two nodes and close uh, these two nodes, use the down arrow key. Again, bringing that down into the area here. Turn this into an arc. It's gonna shoot down, you know, this what it does. Gonna bring that in there. Okay, now, I actually want um, a boundary around this because this is going to be raised up. It's going to be, the letters are going to be raised. They're not going to be carved in. So I actually want a boundary around this. Uh, and knowing that, uh, I want to take my two nodes here. Now that I got my curve in there, I actually want to lower all three. Well, let's do the sides first. And it, it lowers it all the way because there's not a node in the middle, so that's fine. Um, I don't want it to be too squished. So that's good there. This one and this one. All right, all right. Now, I want to draw a rectangle kind of matching the same curve. And um, I wish I could take, you know, the, uh, I wish I could take um, and create that rectangle from the distorted box, distortion box, but unfortunately I can't. But let me see if I offset what that would look like. Trying to find that, bear with me just one second. Three, seven, five. Okay. That'll give me, what I'm doing is that'll give me lines to work with for my rectangle. Because my rectangle is just gonna be a rectangle with, you know, uh, with an arc and it's not gonna be the letters that follow this. This might look good with the letter outlines uh, like that, where it has the shape of the letters and it being raised in there. Uh, I'm not going to delete this vector. I'll do two tool paths and we'll see which one looks better. But what the, what I, the whole purpose of this was this gave me a place to kind of get my rectangle drawn to. Um, and I can go into node editing turn this into an arc. I don't know why it shoots up like that, but hey, it's okay. And I'm just gonna kind of, uh, you know, I'm snapping to that line, that's good. I'll look and see how close I am to my, um, 
my little flourishes. And again, just bringing this and snapping this to here. And I've got space between my flourish there and space there. I'm okay with that. I'm good with that. And as far as here, I'm gonna let that bow tie kind of ride. I'm not gonna round it off or anything like that. And that's gonna be it. All right, let's go ahead and carve this up and see what we've got. Um, we're gonna do this two ways. We're gonna do this as a raised sign. We're gonna do this as a uh, partially raised, partially carved sign. We're gonna do this as just a raised sign altogether with everything carved in. So we're gonna, there's gonna be three or a couple of ways here. So the first way is we're gonna select the, um, oops, let me get out of node editing mode. There we go. We're gonna select the uh, fonts. Um, I do not want that offset that I created, you know, the around the outside of the letters. I don't want that. Um, I do want, the W's and the R's selected here, they're gonna be raised for this. And so we're gonna have a combination of raised text with V-carved text. So that being said, we're going to do a V-carved toolpath. I will set a flat depth. Now for me, um, I'm gonna go uh, eighth of an inch. I just like the way it spreads out and looks good. Uh, it doesn't make everything look so clumped up and stuff. And I'm gonna be using a 60 degree V-bit with my quarter and eighth inch end mill kind of being my clearance tools. And what should happen here with this is we should have the uh, R and W raised, the welcome raised and kind of carved out around it. And then the Royal Wagon Farmhouse and the Flourishes carved in. So we're gonna go preview the visible tool path. That's the quarter inch end mill, followed by the eighth inch mill, end mill, followed by the V bit. Okay. Let me turn off the color for right now. Um, or let me make it just a little bit more subtle color and everything so you can see you know, what's going on. I got, I got the resolution turned down low uh, right now, but let's do the border. So this is gonna be a profile cut. Uh, I'm gonna be cutting uh, just a very thin profile, uh, not very deep. So I'm gonna go an eighth of an inch deep. Uh, 0.15 would be my maximum. I'm gonna use the 60 degree V bit to help me with that uh, profile cut and I'm going to be cutting on the line. This is just going to give me the outline around everything and then I'm going to have my profile cut cutting out the sign. Probably an ugly looking frame you know and all but uh, still um, <laughs> it's what I drew right. Uh, let's see here. Select, I'm gonna be on the outside line. I'm not gonna add tabs for preview purposes. Uh, just want to pull this out. All right, so as of right now, uh, this is the standard kind of carved sign. I'm added, I added color to this just so you can kind of see if I took the color out, uh, especially in the letters and all, it's a little bit blurry because of the simple fact that uh, I have the resolution turned down low. Uh, but um, basically the letter W and R are raised around this word welcome is carved away. So it's kind of raised but with all the detail inside that, those are carved down also. Um, and then our border and everything. So adding just a little bit of color just kind of showcases that a little bit. 
Now, let's switch it up a little bit. Um, thank you very much, uh, guys and girls. Uh, appreciate that. I'm glad you think it looks good. Uh, let's switch it up a little bit and let's reverse things. Um, we're going this time. We're going to select everything except for the outside border here. Now, I do uh, want the word welcome uh, still raised around here. So I'm actually going to turn off that rectangular border. Um, uh, that's a lie. I'm actually going to leave that. I want the word welcome carved in while everything else is raised. Uh, the, uh, the W's and the R's are going to get carved in as well. Um, so we're just switching it up how we select our vectors. So let's preview this toolpath. V-carve toolpath, same settings, just vectors are selected different. We have the border added in this time. And then we'll switch it up again. And we'll add a, an additional offset um, to get things uh, reversed again. So this time, Royal Wagon Farmhouse is going to be raised. The flourishes are going to be raised. The R and W are going to be carved in. The circles will be raised, but the R and W will be carved in. And the word farmhouse will be carved in uh, with its little decorative detail. And the word, or the welcome, the word welcome. Um, now, the word welcome, probably a little bit too fancy, you know, of a word welcome uh, and everything. Uh, it could, uh, you know, probably be uh, better and all. But let me turn off the color here so you can see what's going on. So now uh, everything is carved around uh, farmhouse and the flourishes and royal wagon in the circles. And then the letters are getting carved down into the circles. Uh, the word welcome is getting carved down into that kind of banner that's there in the middle. Uh, and then the R as well too. So when we add the color uh, back to that, uh, we have this sign, and then again, if we run the profile cutout, and I actually prefer this over the other version, um, but uh, we'll let that cut out, and then let's get that uh, looking straight on there so you can see that. And then I'll tilt it to the side a little bit so you can see the raisedness of everything right all right now ladies and gentlemen i totally forgot that uh i had my background set to a green screen uh and everything um let me show you how to change that background um i'll go into edit options and with this background uh i can change it to a gradient color a solid color or an image uh, and I have it on a solid color and I have it to this um, background here. Uh, let me change that green up so it's not so I did. I, sorry, I had no idea. I forgot that I had it on there. Let me um, let me change that up real quick. One nine seven. One eight one one five eight one five eight one nine seven one eight one one five eight RGB colors red green blue um RGB red green blue uh colors um so that's their color codes and everything. Here we go. Uh, and um, so the signs and everything. So the last way, so I like this way. This one's my favorite by far here. But let's switch it up one more time uh, with the way we select things. So on this one, we're going to still keep things uh, raised up uh, here. But the circles are going to get carved down. Um, let me see. Uh, let's do 
let's do this one more way. So we'll select this. We will um, take these two circles. Let's offset them inward. Can't go that far because of my W. My W is right on, right on the edge. So, we will let me think let's offset outward an eighth of an inch it's going to create a little bit of a fragile area there i'm not we're not i'm most likely not going to be happy with that but let me just take this one step further we're going to turn off the borders this time. So those are not going to be raised in, or that's not going to be carved in. Um, the Yeah. Let's V-carve toolpath this. So we added an extra line around the circles and we took away the boundaries around the welcome. V-carve, same settings and everything, flat depth of an eighth of an inch, quarter inch end mill, uh, 60 degree V-bit, eighth inch end mill. And reset that. What this should do now is the letters R and W should be raised. There should be an, a ring around them. So we should have a ring around them. The word welcome is just going to be raised uh, with it, its normal whatever decorative carving. There we go. Let it finish up. Almost done. Run the profile cut to preview that. All right, and so with this one, let me turn off the color. This is the last one. Basically, by adding in the extra line around the circles and everything, it creates this ring so that it's all carved down like everything else, but that ring still is carved up around the R and the W. Not having a boundary around the word welcome, the word welcome is also raised up uh, like everything else. And so um, if we turn the color back on, we just have this little ring. Now, of course, my rings are not really flowing real well with the uh, this radius, this arc should be probably a little bit more on the top and bottom, a little bit more on the straight edge, more of a lip coming down with a slider arc, uh, opening this up some so it's not so sharp there. But again, that's what I've got to work with. That's what we've created. And um, one sign, three different ways, just depending on the vector selection and, and how you do and stuff and all. But uh, we've distorted the word welcome, so it's kind of distorted and it's following the curve of those two flourishes, right? Uh, and so with the use of the distort tool uh, and everything, and let me get rid of the border here. I didn't do that tool path because I didn't think it would look good. Uh, this one here, I'm just gonna move to a layer. And uh, that way I can turn that layer off for a minute. But we simply distorted the word welcome to kind of have that somewhat that similar arc as we got going on there where things widen up and then things narrow down. Um, and so imagine if none of this stuff existed here. Imagine if you just had a, if we got rid of all of this and 
even got rid of this and that. And then we took this and sized it up to here. And we took a border there. We could very easily just make a very simple, um, let me change up the font, uh, bear with, oh, I can't, uh, it's a vector, but we'll, we'll stick with it for now. So if I did a V carve toolpath with this, same settings and everything, you would get exactly what you would expect with the border here is the raised effect. Um, and just a very simple welcome sign, right? So uh, hopefully tonight, uh, we're gonna end in about six minutes. If you have any questions, go ahead and ask them now uh, and um, and everything. And let's see what Big Daddy, Big Daddy, I didn't read his comment, uh, but he said something about a chip and dip bowl. Uh, let's see here. Uh, looks like a chip and dip tray. Which one? <laughs> Let me know which one. Uh, uh, Kevin, let me know which one uh, is a chip and dip tray. Um, one word. Good. Two words. Okay. So Harvey says two words. Everybody else says one word. I'm going to keep farmhouse as one word for now. Uh, and uh, we'll go from there. And um, I don't see. Yeah, if you have any questions on anything, now would be the time to ask. But, um, you know, even with this here, we have just a very simple welcome sign, right? Uh, and all, and again, probably would look much better with a different font. Uh, but no matter what font we have in there, Fill. No, hold on a second. Where's my farm? Um, it's not black slab. The font list only carry at the top. It only holds up to five of your fonts. Uh, we'll just go with Cambria uh, for right now. Bold. Uh, let's size that up here. Let's get it centered, align to center, size it down just a little bit. And I'll throw the distort on it. So I'm gonna select these two nodes again and pull them down, turn this to an arc and pull that arc in the middle up. Same thing, the top two nodes, I'm gonna use the up arrow key, bring them up, turn it to an arc and pull that down. And go back into that select all of that. One more time, select all that and calculate, right? So have some fun with uh, picking fonts is half the battle. Isn't that right, Jerry? That is absolutely right. Um, the, uh, but you know, just uh, imagine, you know, a layout. Imagine, you know, uh, changing up some of your fonts or changing up some of your words or distorting a little bit and just give it kind of that creativeness, uh, creative flow and everything. And again, um, country word signs. It would help if I'm using the right dang keyboard. 
country and put sign. When we're looking at examples and things for inspiration, um, not only uh, do they have some pretty cool sayings and things and, and stuff, but uh, the way things are laid out uh, is an example. Make it sweet is kind of the prominent text there. Life is short um, is, you know, the main part. Life is short, make it sweet, right? But make it sweet is the more prominent of the text. So life is short is kind of off to the side and above. Uh, and they've got it kind of separated so the S can flow in the middle. Uh, one of my favorite uh, signs, if I can quickly find it, is this one. So the life, they've got that uh, in kind of a big block. Uh, it's a big rectangular shape. But they've got the letter I, uh, they've got it broken up in a font. So they got the letter I condensed. So they, you know, they drug the I up. And it gave a place for the B to go, right? Uh, and um, it's not quite centered. You know, the um, it is uh, just off a little bit so that B can fall right there. And visually, there's you know, it doesn't dis distract that at all. Uh, in the, they've kind of got some hyphens there and then, you know, country. And country, uh, the font itself just kind of is a little, gives a little bit of a distortion and stuff in the font. Um, Remember we talked about Country Roads Take Me Home? So there's another variation right there, Country Roads. And then the C has this nice flourish coming off of it and Take Me Home in the corner, right? So there's, uh, you know, um, the uh, uh, there's a lot of uh, cool creative ideas uh, for layout, uh, you know, gather, you know, somewhere else. And I am going to leave you with... Uh, a fun one um, that uh, you might have saw in the thumbnail and uh, this is where we're gonna say goodbye I'm gonna create this really quickly just to show you and then um, uh, and let's look at this 3d view one here real quick so that was that with the word the proper word welcome right so very nice and I think that other sign would probably look better with this type of word uh, welcome versus that really carnival looking one right uh, and everything. So again, uh, this is all raised. All right. So let's, uh, I'll just keep the same big sign here. Uh, let's delete that. And um, let me answer a quick question. How much for one-on-one -on -one lessons for someone who is uh, not very com uh, computer technical? Uh, James, so um, I have two subscription options. Uh, one is a monthly subscription. It's $18 a month for one hour per month of one-on-one -on -one, uh, training time on whatever topic or you know project you want to work on. Uh, those sessions are video recorded, so you'll get a, your video emailed to you at the end of that session so you have something to watch of our time together. Or annually, uh, 12 months for the price of 11. It's $198 a year. Um, and you get 12 hours that you can use anytime you want. You could do two hours today, four hours tomorrow, and that kind of thing. Um, now, if you didn't want to subscribe and you just wanted to kind of pay as you go, it's $45 an hour. Uh, you can go to digitalwoodcarver.com forward slash training and scroll down on the training page and you can see those subscription options and everything there. Cool beans. Um, all right. And uh, the... Last project that I'm going to leave you with, it's going to be kind of a big project, right? But uh, you probably saw it in the thumbnail, uh, and uh, it's just kind of a, a cool way that they played on words. Um, uh, I, liked, I liked the way that they, they played the words and everything. All right, let me find a good font for this. Bear with me just a second. And um, when I say let me find a good font, I know the font. I just can't remember if it was started with a B. Or a G. Okay, it's not the Banafield font. It is the. Let me see here. Nope, it's not that one. It's not the Bodoni, so it's not the B's.
It's not a Cambria. It's not the Franklin family. H J K. Well, I go back to um, it's not the Oswald. I wish Vetrick would have kept it up. I had it up at the top for this whole class. And I wish Vetrick uh, would have kept it up. And as a matter of fact, I can cheat. I can cheat. Hold on a minute. Uh, let me go back to sheet one. And in sheet one, this font right here is Glossy Search. <laughs> Glockester? Glockester? Glockester MT Extra Condensed. It's in the G's. All right, let's go back to here. Glock, Glockester. So just remember Glock. Let's come back here. In the G's. There it is. Okay, wonderful. All right, so uh, for this, uh, I'm gonna type in uh, a T there. I'm gonna type in an H. I'm gonna type in the word peace. All right, now this is one of my favorite uh, play on how they lay out the designs. And man, there's a lot of different words that uh, that could go together that could be used with uh, this type of layout and everything. But um, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna snap the T right to the top of the P and I'm gonna snap the H right to the top of the E. Now on the E, when I snap this H here, I want to break the word piece up into vectors because I want to take the letter E and I'm actually going to stretch it. So the E is going to be just slightly stretched uh, to the about the length of the H. And right here, that little hump, that little overlap, uh, it really doesn't matter because going, there's going to be a space there. But I'm going to go into node editing and I'm going to uh, delete this point right here. And I'm going to delete this point. I'm going to let that kind of ride down just like that. Good. And that's how I'm going to leave that. Now, I'm going to take these two items. And I'm going to just create a little bit of a space right here. Not much. I'm going to take the... EAC and I'm going to stretch that up to the top of the H there and then I'm going to select the whole thing and I'm going to size it up stretch it out a little bit get it centered on the board and then I'm going to use the distort tool, put it in a bounding box, and I'm going to turn this into an arc and pull that arc slightly down. Turn this into an arc, pull that slightly up. So there's just a little bit of a curvature there. And then we're going to create a border. I'm gonna take the on that border, I'll just offset it inward. 
Uh, let's go one inch. And let's calculate that. So preview that visible tool path. Calculate. Rod, thank you very much, Rod. I appreciate this. It's been fun and great learning experience. Thank you, man. I appreciate that, Rod. Uh, and uh, that super chat's awesome. So um, we're going to, man, I appreciate that. And I got Keith. Right, Keith. I said I said thank you to you. Right, and I said thank you. I did say thank you. I didn't. Doug the dog and Big Daddy Fish. Right, and everything. Rod, you guys are just so super awesome. But uh, so this is just kind of a plain word. So the E A C, of course, are the common letters in the two words. Right. Uh, you got the teach piece. Right. So imagine imagine two words that fit together that actually make sense, where. The middle of the words, the ends are different, but the middle of the words would be the same letters. They're common letters and everything. And this is just a cool, I think it's just a cool way uh, that signs can be done where it's like, you know, I mean, reading that, you know, teach peace, right? You know, the, the EAC is being used for both the letters and everything, but it's just the way that it's laid out. I thought that was a cool layout for a sign. Uh, and everything and it really opens up a lot of things for me creatively like you know just like man what other words have you know common letters that actually make sense that would be an inspirational type sign or something that would hang on the wall or something like that uh, I don't I don't know any off the top of my head uh, you know but thinking but um, I thought that was a pretty cool uh, play uh, there and um, you know so uh, yeah, fun stuff uh, with that. So um, with that, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to say good night. Um, and uh, uh, I didn't see any questions come up, uh, but I'm glad each and every one of you, hopefully you got something out of this. Again, very these are very rudimentary, simple designs, right? There, there's nothing complicated about it, but... It's just kind of a quick way to show um, how the distort tool could be effective and useful uh, to kind of give you curves and flows and things. Um, it hopefully gave you a little bit of insight to, you know, layout, you know, maybe, you know, be think about your layout and be creative. You know, not everything has to be like a book in order you know, and stuff like that and, uh, and all. Um, and yeah, so, uh, uh, John Thompson says, save your work. Yeah. I'm not saving any of these. Uh, um, I could make them up again if I ever wanted to carve them or something, but, uh, uh, they're just fun examples and stuff. Uh, but, uh, but thank you. No need to save them tonight. Uh, I've, I've got these files, uh, created like that separately in, in other projects and stuff, but, um, uh, hopefully, um, how you add flourishes or how flourishes can make a make or break a sign or make your difference at all. Um, and, uh, you know, you can just uh, have some fun with it, right? And um, now uh, on that uh, other sign, you know, the country roads was off to the left. Uh, a flourish like this was coming off of the sea. Uh, and then take me home was right above that flourish, like we saw in the picture and everything. So, uh, lots of different ways that you could, uh, that you could do, um, distortion and things and the way you can, um, you know, lay out your signs and, and have some fun with that. So keep that in mind. Enjoy it. Thank you very much, everybody. Hey, stay tuned this week. Uh, kind of look at the uh, uh, the community section of the Spindle TV um, channel and everything uh, for an announcement. There's going to be a video announcement coming out and everything. So uh, hopefully uh, you'll enjoy that as well. All right, everybody. Thank you very much for tonight. I appreciate you. Y'all have a wonderful evening and enjoy the rest of your week and your upcoming weekend. Until next time, I'll see you soon.